Welcome back to the Real Estate Success Podcast. I'm your host today, Jim Ingersoll, and I want to welcome you back. I also want to thank everybody who's been leaving me some reviews and sharing all this content. You guys are awesome. You are the reason that we keep this show going. We've uh, done done this maybe 50, 60 shows now, and it's it's been rocking, and I really appreciate all of our loyal Real Estate Success listeners. Hey, coming up in February, I want to make sure that you're aware of the fact that we've got our next cash flow boot camp here in beautiful Richmond, Virginia. It's February 22nd to the 24th. You can get all of the information at InvestorTrainingSummit.com and you can plan to join us in person and it will be an epic event that could actually change your life. So go to InvestorTrainingSummit.com. Now, today we're doing our first episode ever in live in my office. So I've got the amazing Forrest and Dila along with me and we're gonna talk about ways that you can get your flips sold faster. We're gonna talk a little bit about Airbnb as well. Uh, Forrest, you're, you've also been an investor for a long time, right? That's correct. And Dila, you're the amazing designer Aww. who does all of my staging, right? Yes, thank you. And uh, so I've had the pleasure of traveling with these folks also all over the world on Financial Friend Network cruises and things like that. And they're just, uh, they're top-notch people. And I want to help all of our success listeners today to understand why staging does work to sell your flips faster and for for, for more money as well. So, uh, Dila, welcome to Real Estate Success. Thank you, Jim. Uh, first of all, I want to thank thank you, you uh, to Jim Ingersoll and the lovely wife, Cheryl, uh, for trusting in Dila Design. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I love working with him. He's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're awesome, too. I mean, you, oh, you make you. our houses, they just pop. And that's why, I mean, you see how fast our houses are selling. Isn't yeah. it amazing? It's, it's a huge blessing from God. All of our houses are selling ridiculously fast. Like hot tamales. <laughs> like hot tamales. Yes, our flips sell like hot tamales. Boy, they sure do. We are so blessed to do so many. And But, you know, when, when these buyers walk in, I mean, they're like wanting to send us contracts quick. Hmm. And that's because they can relate to what they're seeing with your staging as well as the design elements of our flip. And you pull those two together and it is like selling hot tamales. <laughs> the last one we did was a couple weeks ago or last week, whenever it was, and we listed the house at like four o'clock. We had a showing at six o'clock and we got a contract. Wow. So in two hours after listing, we sold the house. Hmm. That was the one on Keith Road. Yeah. Remember that one? Uh-huh, yes. So let's start there. Let's, okay. let's talk about some of these designs that you've done for us and what you like about them. So okay. maybe start with that one, because all of our listeners are like, how did you sell a house in two hours? Hmm. Okay, most, of, most buyers have a hard time looking past empty rooms, like pink walls or, yeah. you know, like dark wood kitchen cabinets. So uh, that's how staging um, works. So plus empty rooms look smaller than the stage rooms. Yes, mm -hmm. so empty rooms look smaller. I think staging creates a warmth in the design. Yes. And I think it allows people to see themselves living in that house. Do you mm -hmm. agree? I agree. Uh, so uh, sometimes people think where to start. So I normally start, focus on the front first. Mm -hmm. like Because people will make decisions from outside. You yeah. know, like 30 seconds as they approach the front door. Curb appeal. Curb appeal. So important. Yes. And then um, and then after that, you have to uh, think about necessary furniture, where to put them, like uh, the, the important furniture, like sofa, coffee table, rug, and then uh, accent chairs. And like I that. think you're right. I think when they pull up to the curb or see your pictures online, they've got to they've got to see themselves walking in that front door. Mm -hmm. And then that first step in the front door, I always say, is really important. And then as they as they flow into the house, the flow of the house, and then you see, you incorporate all these amazing colors and all oh. these textures and things, Dila. How do you do that? Okay, um, I actually incorporate colors because I learned about feng shui. Um, feng shui. Yeah. Did I say it right? 
feng shui <laughs> in chinese they say feng shui but feng shui. Uh, americans say okay. feng shui so um the colors like um like when you go back look at pictures of staging like eight years ago yeah. you know the colors most of the colors is like neutral colors right bland but now the color is hip i mean the state staging is hip mm -hmm. so that's why i always use colors like for example like the room colors like neutral like uh, earth colors like yeah. soft pastels and then i uh, incorporate a bit of red in the pillows or mm. blue in something else you know like i also use wood and because feng shui have four style uh, four elements water okay. wood metal and uh, fire okay so go through so feng shui has four elements the first one you said is wood yeah wood fire fire metal like metal water water yes okay like for example like fire uh, the colors fire like red, orange, red. orange yellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you put, for example, like red uh, in the bedroom, it's not really good because you want to, um, you know, rest. Because right. red is uh, energized, powerful. you know, powerful. So it's better you put like in the gym or, you know, like uh, yeah. corporate in the dining room a bit, you know, but not like not in the bedroom much. so no, no red in the bedroom no <laughs> <laughs> things are red hot in that bedroom yeah Gila. <laughs> um how about water and metal and stuff where okay, do you where water, do you incorporate some of that like water like blue blue like black mm -hmm. or water like for example like in a bathroom okay it's already have mirror mirror also yeah. Uh, consider in feng shui as aspirin in feng shui like it's very good cure so it considered as a water element mirror okay. so because bathroom have water a lot of water in the pipe so you want to put like earth color in there like pastel or earth tone in the bedroom so it's like no it's bathroom. Oh, in the bathroom got it like to and you normally do that through like towels towels yes towels and you'll do it with like shower curtains mm -hmm. and you like to hang pictures on the wall in the bathroom yes. right so in the bathroom i like to put white because okay. white spells clean it does <laughs> so yeah so you'll use like a, a white towel a white shower curtain and pastels and, stuff. and pastel yeah. colors and then how do you figure out what kind of picture to put on to like the wall in the bathroom something like sweet and you know like calm looking mm -hmm. so sometimes i put like picture of a, a a view of something you know like scenery or you know like mm -hmm. what kind of pictures and scenery do you like to use in bathrooms <laughs> depends like what? depends like uh, yeah like yeah like <laughs> Like a scenery of, uh, you know, like uh, nature, nature or yeah, or, nature's good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the things I really like that you use in the bathrooms are the seashells. Oh, I love oh, seashells. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then you take some of the geodes that have been polished and you frame them. And some of those are really, they really pop when you go and look at the bathroom. Yeah, you're right. Coastal. Yeah. Coast, yeah. Coastal is also calming to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So that kind of goes into the theme with water. Water, yes. So she tries to take people on a journey through the home. So it gets back to what you said earlier about that first step inside. Yeah. They have to have something to look at, something to walk inside for. So she takes them on a journey all the way through the house. So you the larger the house, she'll like stage an entire tour of the house. Forrest, that is a phenomenal picture and imagery you're creating there. So dig into that a little more. Tell me a little bit more about that. So if there's a living room, as soon as you walk inside, you want to see that whole setting of where somebody would be relaxing. Mm -hmm. But let's say, for example, it's a foyer or an entryway. And the first thing you see when you get inside and you can't see that living room, you want to have a focal point to walk in at that will lead you into another room or lead you into that living space. So 
that's one of the things that she does mm -hmm. as a stager is to mm -hmm. get people to walk through the home in a particular way. And also you have to think about traffic and conversation flow in the living room, for example. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, like how you move between chairs and you don't want to put like accent chair further from the sofa because you can't communicate uh, right. conver converse well and people cannot really hear you so that's why we have to think about you know the setting the layout mm -hmm. of furniture and also one one more thing that if you stage house either you already you know living there and then to sell you have to uncluttered i know yeah <laughs> so that's a good point so if, if somebody's listening to the podcast today and they want to sell their own home. What are some tips? Your tip number one is to declutter. Yeah, declutter. Get um, rid of junk. Get, get rid of junk. <laughs> <laughs> and then just put like simple accessories, like neutral colors. And simple accessories and neutral colors, okay. And then uh, put like uh, some books, mm -hmm. uh, like neutral colors. And But uh, one thing that is a no-no to put uh, family pictures. Yeah, too yeah. personal, mm -hmm. right? You, so no yeah. family pictures. Oh boy, me and my grandkids, they're going to have to go in the drawer. <laughs> Just kidding. And then um, uh, declutter yeah. it, close it, because people want to see... They look small. Yes, you're If right. you get junk, junk out of your closet, it'll look a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think those are all really good tips. And you guys stage uh, here in my market in Richmond, Virginia, right? Yes. So if some of our success listeners in Virginia wanted to reach out to you and talk to you about your services, how would they best connect with you? Uh, they can uh, contact us on uh, dealadesign.com. Dealadesign.com. So it's D-I-L-A design.com, right? Yes. Dealadesign.com. Uh -huh. Okay. And then they go there and they can communicate with you and contact you from there. Message. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. And let me ask you this. Now, say somebody's listening to us in LA because we have listeners all over the country or Boston or wherever. Mm -hmm. And they they realize the need for staging, but they don't know how to find a good stager because everybody thinks they can stage. Okay. <laughs> you know, like everybody thinks they could be a realtor, right? Mm -hmm. um, but not everybody's good at it. So, do you have any tips for somebody to to qualify a stager? I know I'm putting you on the spot there. <laughs> what would you ask? If you guys were going to flip a house, because you guys flip too, I know you do. Yeah. And invest in wholesale and all this awesome stuff. But let's say, Forrest, you were going to do one in Tennessee, since I'm going to Nashville tomorrow. Hmm. And you didn't want to haul all your staging stuff 625 miles. Um, how would you go about finding a stager in a different city? Uh, well, as with anything, you interview more than one. Mm -hmm. And then the second, you know, most important part is it's not about the cost you know you can uh, you can lose money by saving money many yeah. times so it's about who you feel is comfortable uh, you check their references and you know check their days on market and just look at their pictures and you know see what their style is because uh, a lot of times their style might not be your style and if you know the feeling and the emotions aren't there then you're not gonna you're not gonna do well with that person so mm -hmm. you really want somebody that you click with that you know is going to just have a good product for you mm -hmm. regardless of the price there is a limit you know that has to be cost effective you understand because you also flip houses so you understand correct. the budget side on flipping right that's mm -hmm. correct that's <laughs> correct i understand the budget but I also understand value, and I also understand return on investment. And, and time. And yes. time. Speed is a big thing. I mean, you guys watch how many houses we flip. You're in every one of them. <laughs> so you know, like Thank speed, you. the three things we focus on when rehabbing is speed, quality, and cost. Yes. And we're and all, always... All three are important. So speed, days on market's really important. Quality... All the way through, all the way through staging is important. Mm -hmm. And price is always important, but those if you can hit two out of those three, you're doing pretty well. The, the thing about time is us as investors, <laughs> we all are using somebody else's money. Right. Whether it's you know money that's not invested somewhere that you own, or whether it's hard money, or whether it's a private yep. investor, time is money. So you know if you can spend a couple hundred extra dollars 
to get it staged probably to save two or three mortgage payments. Right. And, you know, it's a good a payback. Bag. It's a good payback. Mm -hmm. So thinking of back, dealer, about all your designs you've done, and I want to come back to this in a minute, but I've also noticed how you change your design based on the house. Yes. And let's go here first. So like I do all different sizes. I'll do small three bedroom, two bath ranches. And sometimes I'll do a two story house that's a lot bigger. And sometimes I'll do a house that's a hundred years old. Mm -hmm. And you like customize what goes into those spaces. And I think your, your staging overcomes some of the limitations of my houses. Thank you. In a, in a good way. Hmm. Because sometimes in a small house, I may have a really small living room mm -hmm. or like a small rectangular space. And you can take out the issue of somebody saying like, I don't think I can fit my furniture in here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think back to like, say the one on Lundy, the one on Temple, a couple of these other ones where I walked in and I'm like, I'm a little nervous because some of those rooms are smaller than I like. Hmm. But when we stage them, I feel like people connect with the space. Mm -hmm. how, how do you do that? Like um, change up your, your design based on the space? Yeah, I, um, I normally look at the style of the house, the architecture mm -hmm. and, the, you know, where the house is, for example, like in urban or you urban. Know, historical place. Historic like, uh, or in the country. Street. Yeah, 21st Street yeah. in Churchill. So I... Uh, for example, like your house in 21st Street, yeah. Church Hill. Yeah. I put a lot of uh, historical stuff like mm -hmm. uh, the band chairs, uh, the co the cotton, uh, yeah. you know, arrangements and uh, a big uh, north and south. Yes. Compass. compass. The big compass. Big one. Hey, I also remember <laughs> the one we've been doing some in Williamsburg. It's very historic and you use those like... A, Tobacco, tobacco baskets, basket. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it connects you to the history of that area, right? right? You like mm -hmm. doing that? I like doing that. Mm -hmm. I like doing that. And then I study about history, about the place too. It's interesting. And also, like, I look... the. I remember just now I told you about how I lay out, think yeah. about the layout, yeah. the converse, conversation yeah. flow, and, the, you know, the layout of the room. So that's how I put my furniture. And also, I look at where my focal point gonna be. If the house have fireplace, yes, I make it as a focal point. So you want the fireplace to pop, right? Yes. So and uh, also, like I told you before, fireplace is hot. So right. To counterbalance the heat, uh, make it not too hot in the room. So I put mirror. Got mirrors the, I love too because it makes the rooms look bigger, right? Bigger. And then uh, mirror is also a kind of a cure in Feng Shui. Mm -hmm. For example, like, uh, um, you know, to make the house look, uh, the space look bigger and make the more light in. But mm -hmm. uh, also if you put mirror in wrong direction, mm -hmm. it's not going to be good. For example, like you put mirror opposite uh, facing directly to main door or facing the bed yeah or on top of the bed <laughs> <laughs> on the ceiling oh my goodness no mirrors that's on the ceiling good. no that's not good feng shui no. <laughs> <laughs> does feng shui also talk about like the direction of the house or yes. am i wrong because mm -hmm. i i knew one investor that, that would only try to flip houses facing north does that make any sense yes what is the deal with that? Uh, Do you know? Because if uh, when it's, it's good if the sun go up in front of your okay. house because uh, in Feng Shui, um, sun go, um, uh, what do you call rise up yes. in front of your front door. Hmm. So north. North is, is good. good. Yes. Well, it must be because I worked with him and I helped him and. This was a house in Northern Virginia. He mm. made over $100,000 on that flip. Wow. Which is, nobody should put that as their expectation. Mm -hmm. That That's like finding a unicorn. Oh, and then another one I remember. But he about, did it. Huh. About mirror? Yeah. Uh, if you have a kids or children in the house, um, it's better if you put full mirror, full length of mirror, mm -hmm. so the children can see themselves as full image. Gotcha. To make them... To make the self-esteem go up. Oh, that's, that's a nice that's way to look in, at it. Yeah. 
Yeah, self-esteem is important. So she uses, to get back to your point yeah. about how you make a small space look inviting. Yeah. She changes her size of her furniture. So you'll see. I've noticed. As she, you know, depending on the living room is the size of the coffee table, the size of the couch, the size of the end tables. Uh, so like I mentioned, like Temple and Lundy, and you use small, and I notice you use small accessories uh -huh. and furniture right and then the coffee table is uh, rectangular uh -huh. not square and then over to black oak was a big living room and you used like a full-sized sofa right yes yes so that right. was on purpose you noticed that <laughs> mm -hmm. everything is on purpose everything she does as a plan she executes that plan in a couple hours but right. that plan takes a day or more of her thinking thinking and designing and I've tried to get her on uh, an automated design program, and she's going there because we're starting to do the virtual staging. Yeah. But she still does everything on a little notepad and everything <laughs> by hand, and she'll sit at dinner and she'll just be drawing everything up. Sometimes I Are have... you like an artist too? Yeah. You can, I, I didn't know I that. I like to sketch. I would love to see one of mine if you still have it. Some or the of next her one. art is in. <clears throat> is in uh, some of the houses Bowling green and some of my father's art we use yes I've noticed your dad's paintings which yeah, is he's awesome, awesome. He's an awesome Dave's guy. a great guy and I, yeah I'm happy to see his paintings Dila I didn't know you were an artist too oh, you are just multi-talented thank you that's so really neat before sometimes before I uh, I have an idea to sketch I have to you know like walk outside look yeah. around first or sometimes after I get up for inspiration up from yeah inspiration mm-hmm <laughs> After really that, neat. then I sketch. Okay. Well, again, if you guys are interested in, if you're in Virginia or if you want some help, they're doing some things virtually as well. Just go to dealadesign.com. You can reach out to Deal and Forest, and they can they can help you with your staging um, in a lot of different ways and design. So, do you have any? Um, what else do you want to tell our success listeners today okay. about staging, design, and things like that? All right. Uh, proper staging can help you sell your house right. quickly and possibly you can get for higher price. Yeah, I would agree. Yes. I would agree. It really does help. And, you know, two or three years ago, we used to do our own staging, all of it. So, like, I, I had a trailer. I had, like, a sofa. I had um, end tables. We had all this stuff. And we were mm -hmm. moving. I know Rich Landon, if you're listening, you used to do this as well. We'd move it like all over from house to house to house. And it was a lot of work. Yes. <laughs> and we used the same one in every house. It was very neutral. No color, no texture, no design. <laughs> and it helped some, mm -hmm. but it was a lot of work. And so we've outsourced that to you guys. You guys do every single house we, we work on now. And, I, and I've seen the benefit come back, you know, many times. Mm -hmm. So you're right. I do think it helps you stay. It helps you sell faster for sure. Yes. So what else do you want to? What other tips do you have for our folks today? Mm. Uh, I would say find somebody that you trust. Yep. Find somebody that you like that works with you. No like and trust. That does what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it. Credibility. And uh, you know that is you know what you do. You just get somebody that knows what they're doing like a dealer and you know they just wow you every time nothing is the same with her no no not cookie cutter is it not <laughs> all. it's all custom it's like custom designs by dealer oh right. it's good That's talk right. a little bit about some of the international um oh. flavor that you bring into yeah. our designs i've seen stuff in our houses from africa asia India. canada you know all over <laughs> the world europe yeah, um, I actually put uh, a lot of stuff like from international. Are you from countries. Malaysia, right? I'm from Malaysia. And you guys have has, have been married for a long time, but you've traveled all over the world. Mm -hmm. You're foodies. You love to travel, right? Yes. And you collect all these items, and you have quite a collection. Mm -hmm. I um I went to um Malaysia or Indonesia, and then I I framed like batik. Colorful batik, um, and then also sari from India. Uh, so I hang on the wall like, uh, 
and then also I I will I have these um, few pillows that are uh, made from rug or kilim mm -hmm. from Turkey oh, wow. and a lot of stuff that uh, forest travel to Africa Africa India. Turkey India yes. <laughs> you can't find her stuff at Pier One Imports or, right? or World Market right or World Market I mean she the world is her market all right? <laughs> the and world we, is her market yeah, not world market yeah, yeah I got right. it. we got a box last week from turkey that was mm -hmm. pillow coverings so you never <laughs> know what's going to show up at our house but uh she you know she just has an international vision an international taste and she can pull and blend things together uh she takes fabric sometimes they're called a bate and she will take them and she'll say forest i need a frame that's six feet wide and four <laughs> feet tall. And I'm like, okay. And you build the frame for her? And I build the frame, build the frame That's and awesome. she gets my air tools and yep. stretches the fabric and staples it together. And then goes, okay, it's ready to go. That's awesome. Yeah, she's very cool. I like to tell story in houses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's the uniqueness that she offers that other people... Mm -hmm may or may not offer but she definitely offers a uniqueness that you just you're going to get one-off pieces that you've never seen before you know in the house and uh, she'll take that frame strip that fabric off and put another one on mm -hmm. and she just she's just awesome at what she does she is any final uh, tips for our real estate success listeners today guys oh uh, don't be afraid to don't stitch. be afraid no <laughs> don't be afraid to stitch no, to oh, decorate. Decorate, and, you know, yes. Use color, use incorporate colors, culture, yes. mm -hmm. um, international, and some local flavor. Yep. Is all good, right? You can go walk around the Asian market or, you know, Indian shop where they sell yeah. saris to find ideas. Or you can go to galleries or museum, you mm -hmm. know, to look at colors. and. Or the shop on the beach yes. in the Caribbean mm -hmm. or Hawaii, <laughs> right? Yep. <laughs> If you're with me, because we all love going to the Caribbean. All right. Um, anything final you want to share? Uh, think outside the box. Just you yeah. know, be open mm -hmm. to new ideas. Don't be stuck in what you've been doing. And don't be afraid to try something new. Think outside the box. And if you have to, get a bigger box. That's right. That's don't right. let it limit you right. or your thinking. Think big is a good way to go. I, mm -hmm. I agree with you on that for us. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming along and um, I also want to thank all of our success listeners of this podcast. Thank you again for you guys to leave reviews, share the content. Thanks for reaching out to Deal at DealTheDesign.com. And uh, for considering staging your flips and your Airbnbs and all the other stuff that you guys are out there working on. I think it's, it's great. Make sure that you check out our boot camp. It's coming right up. These folks are going to be along with me. InvestorTrainingSummit.com. You get all of your information there. And again, uh, we created this podcast to help you guys invest in real estate and find success doing it the right way. The right houses, the right financing, the right rehab, the right tenants, the right design, and the right staging. Mm -hmm. So you can get it done, get it sold, make some money, and move on. Thank you, everybody, and I hope you have an awesome day. Thank you, Deal and Forrest, for being my guest today. Thank you, Thank Jim. You, Jim. You're awesome. Thank you.